Evening folks, tonight we're back on the Bedford bus and we're looking at Zenith carburetors or the Zenith carburetor off it because it's been giving me issues at idle and I'm sick of mucking around with it so this is the carburetor's last chance so what we have is a diagram here which shows you all the bits and sadly you missed out on the entertainment of me actually stripping down the carby and I have ultrasonically cleaned it with a 2 kilowatt automotive ultrasonic cleaner unit which uses high frequency vibration and some detergent which cleans them up nicely. So we're going to go through and put this back together and as we do it I'll explain what each bit does. could be quite long and convoluted for those who aren't interested. Tune out now for your sanity's sake. So we've got a bunch of pits. The ultrasonic clean is quite good because stuff comes out quite shiny. So we've got a bunch of jets and things in here. Got the float bowl, all in bits, all the main jets and everything's out of it. So I go through and put that together, but because it's been in an ultrasonic cleaner with water and detergent of some type, I've rinsed it, thrown out the air gun. Now I'm going to go throw this in the oven at 100 and 100 degrees centigrade for about an hour just to dry or drive out all the moisture before we put it back together. So there you have it. So I'll run through the general parts. We've got the butterfly at the bottom which controls your speed. We then have our main Venturi. If I can get it around the right way, that way. Which way is it? That way. There we go. Main Venturi choke plate, throttle body, float bowl and we've got a whole lot of other bits on the table but we won't worry about those. So if we start with the main throttle body these types of carburetors come with a governor, an overspeed governor and they work on the velocity principle apparently which basically means the more air that rushes through it once it reaches a point of too much air passing this butterfly, it will actually shut the butterfly off. Or not completely, it'll dampen down the speed of your vehicle, irrespective of your throttle position, so you have no choice. So if you've got a full throttle, fully open like that, there's a spring down in here, and as your speed gets too much, or the revs get too much, too much air flows past here, and it's like a wing aerofoil and it will actually pull it partially closed and actually your engine will slow down below the red line and it's set up by the spring here so screwing it in makes you or gives you higher revs uh, loosening it off lowers the threshold for limiting the revs or lower revs and it's normally got a cap on the end cap like that which has a lead seal on it to stop people tampering with it. This one has indeed been tampered with. And that's about it really. You have in here a couple of drillings. One, two. One is for the economy valve which is this guy. The drilling goes right down through here and you can see where it comes out in here. So this drilling works by operating a little valve in the top of the other assembly which I'll show you in a minute which adjusts the richness when your uh, lift off at cruise speed just leans out the fuel a bit. The other drill drilling is for your idle and you can see on the top of the throttle plate here little hole here goes and fed through here so vacuum is applied on this line up through the cover up to the top of the float bowl so when this throttle is shut, it will pull fuel down this opening, a, a mixture of air and, or like, um, what do you call it, just mostly fuel with a little bit of air mixed in, and it will pass it through one of the two drillings into the carburetor. There's two here, there's one down here, and the top one I was just showing you. top one that I was just showing you, here is a transition one, so as you open up, it will give you a nice smooth transition from idle to pulling away and when the throttles shut down at idle it will feed most of the fuel through here for your idle so anyway that's the main throttle body 
has brass bushes. These ones don't generally wear out. They're quite good because these can leak and you can have uh, vacuum or idle issues with fuel mixtures. But this one's good. So the next part of our carburetor, which is this guy here, which bolts onto the top of our throttle plate. It's the main body, and then it has the float bowl, which bolts up onto the side. And then there is a fourth part here, which is your emulsion block, which delivers the fuel into the venturi of the carburetor here for high speed running. And basically that is bolted onto the side of your float bowl. And this guy here sits in here, and if you look down the carburetor, you can see where all the fuel pours out into the main airstream. So this casting has two parts to it. There is the Venturi part, which is loose in there, which I need to adjust up. There's a screw through here when I put it all back together. Just helps with alignment. So if we carry on from our throttle plate, we'll follow up the two drillings here. This guy and this guy is talking about which one's which. So that's your um, idle drilling and this is your economy drilling. If you follow those through, it actually continues up through here through a series of ports. I think I had that round the wrong way. So this is your idle drilling, which comes from here. Comes up through the side here and works its way into here. And this is a channel on the float bowl, which is this one here. This one hasn't got the um, little brass brass jet which sits in there, which sets the fuel mixture for idle, which you've got further adjustment using the screw, and the screw goes in the side here. Um, the second drilling was for your economy valve, so when you back off on the accelerator, this throttle plate shuts, you end up with a higher vacuum in the manifold below it, what it, this port is fed, higher vacuum comes up through here, through here, and up through here, if I got up in frame, and comes out this little hole here. The and it has a diaphragm here, and this is your economy valve. Sits on here, there's a spring pushing down on it, there's a housing over the top which you'll recognise, spring in here. What that does is as you back off on the accelerator, it will lean the mixture out, which gives you a bit of economy, if there is such a thing in a Bedford. And it lifts this little brass plate off this hole, and allows it to breathe natural air, or no air that doesn't have any pressures applied to it, down here and through here. And what it does is it lowers the, this guy here is the, I'll find the name for you, capacity well it's called. And depending on the height of the petrol in it, as the capacity in this changes, it makes vehicle run richer or leaner. So it's the, the petrol level in here is irrespective of the level of what is maintained by the float. So what does that mean? It means when you've got your foot to the floor the capacity level in this well is higher because this hole is blocked off and when you back off you increase the vacuum below the throttle plate which lifts the little vacuum diaphragm off and that allows air because the diaphragm is blocking that hole which is effectively blocking this it allows um, the fuel level to drop because you're allowing air to get in behind it because the emulsion block is pulling a lot of fuel through it it's trying to suck out of here and if you let air come in here it will try and suck air down here which lowers your fuel level so it leans out your high speed running. 
So we'll have a quick look at the acceleration pump. So when you put your foot down, there's a series of rods off the bottom of the throttle plate. So it's this one here. When you put your foot down, this is a plunger, and it pushes down onto this guy here, which is like a little piston. And this petrol sits in this cavity here. When you put your foot down, it plunges it down, pushes the fuel up through this cavity here, and there's actually a one-way valve, or a little valve that screws in there, this little guy, there's a little ball bearing in it, and as the fuel comes rushing up, slams the ball bearing shut, which stops it squirting out the top, and pushes it out this hole here, and that hole aligns with this opening here. And in here, there's another little brass jet, this tiny, tiny little guy here. And what that does is it allows raw fuel to squirt straight out in a little jet into your Venturi. So when you're looking down here and you put your foot down on the accelerator while it's not running, you will see it squirt fuel out of there. And I say while it's not running is because you don't want to be looking down here while it's running in case it backfires because you'll get your face bent off if something goes wrong. So that covers your accelerating or acceleration um, pump. Acceleration pump is the word I'm looking for. So we have a series of jets in the bottom of the float bowl which aren't currently in there but while we're on the subject of the acceleration piston if you when they fill this bowl if you push this down well it has a little one-way valve down in here which sits down in here and this you can hear it there's a little ball bearing or plate in there and it stops the fuel when you plunge down here from rushing back into the bowl and actually pushes it out the jet so these two work together. So I've just put the accelerator pump check valve back in, which is this guy down here. It has a little bit of gauze on top with the wee one-way plate. So that feeds into the accelerator pump well over there. So I'll throw on the, the jets down the bottom and then I'll show you what they are. So the jets, we have two. We have uh, the main jet, which is this guy here, and the main jet has 150 stamped on it. And then we have the compensating jet, which is 140 stamped on it. Now the main jet feeds the emulsion block all the time, and there's a fixed rate of fuel. The compensating jet, I believe, works in conjunction with capacity well. Two different sizes, so I'll fling those in there. Oh, and I should explain that these guys feed the main emulsion block, so all of the fuel for high speed running comes from these two little jets down in the bottom of your float bowl. And if you get a lot of rubbish coming in from your fuel tank, can actually block these jets and your vehicle will stop in an inappropriate place like in the middle of a bridge. And if it does happen to stop on the side of the road and you go well how do I get those out because they've got these little hex things in them, well it's quite lucky because when you take the float bowl off the two screw bolts that use for the float bowl come off of just a screwdriver which are in that position and that position. One of those screws has a hex in it and that hex goes straight into that guy there so you can pull these out on the side of the road and blow them out put them back in and away you go again because you can drop off the float bowl quite easily without taking apart the rest of the carburetor so we've now got the main jet screwed in and the compensating jet what i'm going to do is now go and fit the idle jet which is this guy here and this guy here is like a little check valve for the accelerator plunger so, what is the difference? This is the idle jet. And that one has a 4, an 04 stamped on it. There's a tiny little hole in the bottom. And there's some holes up the side too, up in there. And they feed through into here. So the idle jet's in. 
I'm dropping the accelerator pump jet or accelerator check valve. And now we have our accelerator pump, which is uh, this guy here and the spring, and the spring sits below it, so it will return. This little hole down in the bottom there drops into there, and we have a tiny little screw on the side to stop it popping out. I'll do that up top in a minute, so it sits up against that, so when you drop the float bowl off, it doesn't go ping off into the distance. Now we have one last thing to go in, and it's a little tag which sits on top of the float bowl. Now the float bowl, this type, this is brass, pretty cool. Doesn't wear out easily, leak, fracture, or crack. And the float bowl sits in that way down in there. But first, I've got to fit this guy here because this sits on top of the float bowl like that. And the top of this little tab, which has got top on it, pushes against our check valve for the fuel pump to stop the fuel and maintain the height of the fuel level inside the bowl here. There we have it, pretty simple. Flip that out, drop your wee bowl in, it sits on three little shiny tangs that stick out there. Done. So as the fuel level comes up, pushes on the little fuel check valve here, and often there is a little washer in behind here that helps set the fuel level. And your little check valve screws into the underside up here, and your bowl goes up into there. Don't forget your emulsion plate. So we have our classic gasket here. I'm going to reuse this one, it's alright. That sits over the holes here. Emulsion block screws on here. And we have a series of screws, five screws. The longer one goes down here, four shorter ones go up the side. So there we have it, five bowls all back together little gasket in there. There is just something to note, there is a little opening in the top here for the emulsion block. There's a little drilling which goes on an angle down and behind the idle jet here, so you make sure that's clear. So I've just gone and fit a little brass screw in here which holds the sleeve in for the Venturi. I've left it loose, which means it gives me a little bit of play in there. So when I drop the emulsion block in through the side, I'll then set the height. You don't have to worry about this too much. I'm just fussy. I can then tighten it up so there's, it's not bumping on the top or the bottom of the emulsion block. So the assembly of your economy valve is pretty straightforward. We've got our gasket here. And we've got our economy valve drops over there, another gasket, onto there, then we've got our housing on the top but don't forget the little spring in it that pushes down and you've got your little port through here which feeds from the little brass port there. So that's just held in place with four screws. So the economy valve covers on, four screws, paper gasket, rubber diaphragm, paper gasket on top and you're done. Don't forget your idle screw, this guy here, looks pretty clean, just goes in the side here, and then you can set that later. I should say idle mixture screw. Not to be confused with your idle speed, which is that guy there. So before we bolt the main body of the carburetor onto the throttle block, we have on the underside here, two interfacing surfaces, we have a gasket that goes in here. Make sure your ports are open for the economy and the idle mixture. And then we have a adapter, it's like a spacer, it also has two holes for those two ports which should line up 
and it goes together. And finally, you've got your main gasket, which goes between the adapter plate and the throttle body. So I'll put those two together now. So this is held in place by three screw bolts. Two go in from the top, and the third one goes in from the underside, under here. They have spring washers on them. Leave the spring washers on them, because they can rattle apart with shaking. Okay, so the main part of the carburetor is bolted on the throttle body. Just remember when you drop this back onto the base to return the choke and cable in if it's still attached because you can't get to it very easy. This is actually pushed over or crimped. Just put it through here while you're putting it onto the base otherwise you can't get it on. So this guy here is a link up to the choke plate from your throttle so when you're sitting at idle when you go to starter and you give it full throttle when you full choke, when you pull the choke round it pulls on that cable and lifts the idle up a bit as well so that'll help you roughly set it up, there's probably the correct setup for the links in here but just fiddle around with it, there's still witness marks on this so that's how I know where it was originally set up so one of the last things to do is we need to fit a gasket to the underside of here where the float bowl drops down on to, like that. It's upside down at the moment. So we've got our gasket here. This one's a bit discolored, discolored, but it's okay. It's only 12 months old. And it's actually held in here by little pins. These guys look like little dead insects. But they just push in to the casting and they've got tiny little twist, twist grooves on them which cut into the aluminium. So we've got for these we have one over here, one here and then two up the front. One, two, three, four total. So I'll put those in now. And all they do is just hold the gasket in, so when you take the bowl off, the gasket doesn't blow off into the distance, land on the ground. Because this gasket's quite important, because it seals onto <coughs> these guys here. So it gives sealing around your idle, your idle um, mixture, and also your... I can't remember the name of that, I'll just check that. Capacity well. So it seals on the capacity well and the idle jet. And if they don't, you'll have variability in your mixtures. And if you want to know how I get these in, you just drop them in the hole a little bit and I'm just using a pin punch. You just rest it on the top and then give it a tap which is out of frame and push it into place like that. So there you have it, they're the little four little pins that come with the gasket kits, or you can reuse them. You get them out with a, a very sharp chisel. You just push the chisel under the edge, try not to cut the gasket, you can actually get them out. So there's four of those holding that gasket in place. One up there, here, there, and one over the other side. So you've got your accelerator arm pump to set up to, so this is just bolted in through the side here and there's actually a little cover that goes over that which is this guy here that holds that in place and the lever there goes down through the top here and pops out the hole here there's a little flat washer sits in here just stops the fuel spraying out a little bit and that's the arm that pushes onto your accelerator pump, which is this guy here. You always know how you get to the end of assembling something, and you look in the jar and you go, oh, what's that bit from? Well, I forgot to put in the little jet in the back of here. 
and that works off the accelerator plunger pump. Our jet's now in the back of the emulsion block. Don't forget that sucker. So, high speed governor cover, cover. I've made a new gasket because I shagged the other one when I pulled it apart. It's just a matter of getting the cover on the side. Two screws and you're done. So, gasket, you need the gasket because this spring is quite a big opening straight into the underside of the throttle plate. So, that's with the governor cover on. All that's left to do now is attach the float bolt. So when you attach the float bolt, it helps if you've got the accelerator pushed down hard to the floor because see a little pin go up there? It allows you to slide the float bolt in behind in here and because that plunger that I just retracted when I pushed the accelerator down, it sits on the plunger there. And then you can let, let it go. And you've got your two main bolts to hold on. And they are the little, that's one of the bolts that holds on the float bolt that I was talking about before with a little hex in it. So one in there. And one around the other side. Do those up. And then you're done. And that is your Zenith 48 VIR carburetor complete. Just one last thing to do, now that you've got the float bowl on, remember how I was talking about the sleeve that slides up and down inside the Venturi? This has, you can see this move up and down, it's just a matter of roughly centering it between the two, the top and the bottom, that's a nice comfortable position and you're done. At least I'm pretty sure that's what you do, but it's worked for me so far. There you go, that completes the build. The old Zenith 48 VIR carburetor. Thanks for watching. I'll go put this in now and see how it goes. But quick recap. Fuel idle mixture. Idle speed. We've got our vacuum advance off the side. Accelerator pump plunger. So when you put your foot down it plunges. You've got your choke plate on the top and a throttle plate on the bottom with built-in governor. I'm done. There you go. Thanks for watching. Keep on trucking on. See ya.